a lot of agents, what they're using is when they know there's a purchase money mortgage, okay, on the house, whether they got that through an attorney who, who told them, yes, there's definitely a purchase money mortgage, or the client has said, listen, there's a purchase money mortgage, I don't need to see an attorney on this, don't worry about it. If that's the case, you say, okay, fine. If you think this is a purchase money mortgage or you got an attorney to tell you this is a purchase money mortgage, let's move forward and, and let the negotiator know that this is a purchase money mortgage. The reason I, do, I say that is because I don't want you to, add, you know, to give legal advice on what's purchase money and what's not. Okay? That's, that's, a, that's a terrible thing to do because if it's really not, you're in hot water. Okay? And purchase money is, a, is one of those things that is, is hinged on the facts. And if you change one minute fact and the total analysis changes. So be very wary of that. But if it's a true purchase money mortgage, what you do is you talk to the negotiator and say, you know what, you want 20000 up front for my client, but this is a purchase money mortgage. You know, this is a mortgage that they use to purchase the house. If you foreclose, you're getting nothing more than the house. And if it's a second that's holding you up and the house is underwater, if you foreclose, Mr. Second, you're getting zero because they use this as a purchase money. Okay? What happens a lot is these negotiators, especially on the seconds, they look at the file and they say HELOC, they see HELOC and their eyes light up with dollar signs. Right? They say, oh, it's a HELOC. Well, sometimes it's not a true HELOC. Sometimes it's a, it's a purchase money second. Okay? It says HELOC. And a lot of agents have had success telling the negotiator, hey, this is a HELOC. It says HELOC, but it's not a true HELOC. This is a purchase money HELOC. They, the negotiator does their analysis. He goes back to the investor. They get a call back and say, you're right. We're dropping our demand for X amount of dollars. We'll take the 5000 from the first, and we're going to let the short sale go through. Okay? So your awareness of what the loan is helps you in negotiating these, these short sales. Does it make sense? Okay? All right. Now, I say in theory, okay, the, in theory, a true purchase money mortgage is protected, in theory, okay? A true purchase money on a second that's underwater, the, the, if they foreclose, they're going to get zero, okay? That's, that's California law. It does not matter what type of foreclosure they go through. A purchase money is an absolute protection. There's two types of foreclosures in California, judicial and non-judicial. Most of you are aware of non-judicial foreclosures, which are the going through the trustee sale steps, notice of default, notice of sale, trustee sale. That's a non-judicial foreclosure, okay? <coughs> it doesn't matter what type of foreclosure they do. If it's a purchase money, it's absolute protection, okay, against, against deficiency. Um, servicers misunderstanding of a HELOC is a big thing. You know, they see HELOC, again, they think, it's, they think it's, a, it's a true HELOC, sometimes it's not. Why do I say in theory? In theory, they, they, they can't get anything, because there's an, there's an issue out there of mortgage insurance. How many of you know what mortgage insurance is? What's mortgage insurance? Mortgage insurance is when the lender took an insurance policy that, against the mortgage, that they would go into default, if they went into default, that they were assured to get 70, 80, 90 percent of what That's the original loan was. Absolutely true. Uh, now, it's not always people who owe subprime loans, okay, because these lenders know that not, you know, just because you're, you're not a subprime loan person, just because you have impeccable credit, you could still be a risk. Okay, so from 2004 to 2007, nobody was defaulting on mortgages, or very few people, okay? The, the housing market was booming. These mortgage insurance companies had to find a way to have these banks buy mortgage insurance because these banks were like, why do we need mortgage insurance for? You know, we can, we can you know, flip this house in two years, and they'll, pay off, they'll pay, off, pay off our loan and we'll, you know, we were ahead. Why would we need mortgage insurance? Nobody's defaulting. Well, mortgage insurance companies came to them and said, we're going to lower our premiums so low that you can't, you know, you'd be stupid not to take it. Okay? So the premiums for mortgage insurance from 2004 to 2007 that hit rock bottom. A lot of these lenders bought mortgage insurance after the fact. So they, so they, 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 they got this loan from lender A, from Bank of America, who's a traditional lender, who sold it to, you know, <laughs> Nick, and, Nick and Frank mortgages, okay, who sold it to, you know, uh, Bob's Big Boy Mortgage Front Trust Fund, okay? And Bob's Big Boy Trust Fund bought mortgage insurance on it because it was so cheap to buy it because they wanted to minimize their risk. What happens when they bought mortgage insurance is that there's attached to that mortgage insurance policy language. You know, an auto insurance policy only triggers if what? If you get into an auto accident, right? It doesn't trigger if you slip and fall at home. It triggers only if there's an auto accident. Well, mortgage insurance triggers and pays you out if there's an event that occurs. That event, most of the time, is default. 
Sometimes the event was more specific than default. For example, foreclosure. So the mortgage insurance said, if there's a foreclosure on the property, we will pay you, investor, 70, 80, 90% of the loan amount. Okay? If that's the case, if it's that specific and they're not willing to waive that language, then the lender has no other option but to foreclose to recoup a lot of their money back. So you can have the perfect scenario in a short sale, perfect scenario and it not going through. How many of you have had that situation? In a perfect scenario and it doesn't go through. The chances are the lender has mortgage insurance. Now, sometimes when you have a true purchase money mortgage and you still can't get your short sale through and the lender still wants 50000 from your client, the reason why is because they have mortgage insurance and they've done the math. Okay, It costs them 12% more to foreclose in the short sale. They factor that in. And then they say, we want X amount of dollars from your client to let the short sale go through because we would recover that kind of money if we foreclose minus the 12% costs. Okay. There is no question it costs more, more for the bank to foreclose than the short sale. There is absolutely no question. Okay. REOs are more expensive for the bank. There is absolutely no question about that. There's data all over the place saying that. But the reason why they choose foreclosure sometimes still is because there's mortgage insurance. How do you know there's mortgage insurance? Sometimes a negotiator will slip to you if you know how the, the right questions to ask. The way that you know the, uh, most agents get a hint that there's mortgage insurance is because they get some letter that is an act by accident from the from the negotiator. I've gotten two or three letters from from agents sent to me saying, "Hey, take a look at this. I don't know what this means." Lo and behold, it's an it's a letter from the mortgage insurance company to the investor saying, "If this this and this happens, we will pay you out on the policy." By the way, a lot of times. What I'm seeing is the mortgage insurance company will pay out on a short sale. And when that happens, you'd be surprised how quickly your short sale will go through. Yeah. You'd, be surprised, you'd be shocked, right? The short sale just floats through like there's no problem. You're like, wow, this is the best thing ever. It's because they have mortgage insurance, and the mortgage insurance is paying out on the short sale. Okay?